Okay, let's see what we got here. We got the WineGuard V2 for internet. We got the WineGuard Traveler in its currently stowed position for television. And up here we have the WineGuard in motion satellite dome. So what are we missing? We're missing the WineGuard Razor over the air automatic high definition antenna to replace this aging and ailing triple vision that came on top of our Tiffin motor coach. Now, I guess you would say that once I replace this, it'd be a roof by WineGuard, and it will, because everything up here that I use would be uh, WineGuard, <laughs> except for the ACs and stuff, obviously. So let's take a look at the uh, Razor Automatic, and we're gonna install one of these suckers real quick, or not real quick, but we're gonna install one, and we'll see how it all uh, plays out. I did do a before and after. I'll, I'll do a before and after. Like, I, I, took, I took a screenshot of this, the number of channels I got with this, and we'll see how many channels I get with the other Razor. Um, and see how it does. Right now, this thing isn't working very well, though. Um, but in any case, hey, let's move on. So, here it is. Ugh. It says, WineGuard is the first fully automatic high-definition antenna. So, we'll uh, bring out my nifty-difty knife here. Cut that open. We'll open this sucker up and see what we got. Lots of good stuff in here. Manual, quick start guide. Ah, yeah. lots of cardboard. Okay. There it is. So, um, cover plate for if you're installing one fresh, this would go uh, on your roof. Uh, the cable would run down and you would die core over the top of this. There's my mounting screws. This, uh, this is the controller. This is, this is what replaces your, um, your current system inside. This is the controller. It's very easy to install. The three inputs come off of your current controller and then your, your power comes off of your current controller, snaps right onto there. And this is then what you use to run this system or your cable TV just by switching on and off. If you're on, you're on over the air. If you're off, you're on cable TV. So I don't need this right now. This we have to do inside. So I'm just gonna put this down for now. It also comes with a plate, uh, ceiling box cover and everything. Looks like it's got, um, yeah, box cover for your ceiling. So in, if, you're, if you're mounting it inside, if say you have a raised up antenna like this and you're replacing that, this right here will cover that. Uh, when you take that down, this will cover that hole for you on your ceiling inside. But in any case, it comes with everything you need to do a clean install. But let's take a quick look at what we're getting into, okay? Ugh. Ugh. Okay. First and foremost, here it is. There it is. So kind of looks like this, if you will, but it's just, uh, it's automatic also. The connection's got one connection. Power and control comes over this automatically. There's only one connection that talks to the whole device, which means you need one coaxial cable to use up here. So if I put this right here on the roof, can anybody spot an issue with this? This is an issue. And just be aware that I tried one of these when they first came out and I sent it back to WineGuard and I said, sorry guys, uh, this isn't going to work on my motor coach. And they said, why not? Can anybody tell me why out there? Come on, you have to learn something from me, right? Okay, it's because of these roof risers. This is my awning system and over here is a roof riser, which is aluminum. And the problem being is this is too low to the roof. Depending on where you're parked and your elevation compared to the high definition TV antennas or transmitters, if you will. Um, this is going to, that this, these are good. These things, these aluminum is going to block the signal, the high definition signal, and it's going to, it's going to hurt. That's why this is raised up off, off the roof. It's going to hurt your reception if it's like this. So I told WineGuard that, and, um, I'm happy to say they've come out with an S amount to raise it up off the roof for anybody with a roof riser. Now, if you have a motor coach that don't have a roof riser and you don't, you know, you can, you know what I mean by them, um, then you don't need this. So this is an add-on you would do. And basically this would then go on to these, to these screws here, take off these feet right here and go onto these screws. But you can see it raises it up just like that. 
and uh, that gets it above the roof riser. And it's just as tall, basically, as the wine guard dome that's already up there. So there shouldn't be anything that, this shouldn't impede going bridges or anything. My antennas, my, my Wee Boost antennas and stuff are higher than this, and I don't ever hit an antenna. So I'm not going to have any issue with this riser being up here, but I definitely want it up here because I want to be able to cross over the roof type. So what we're going to do is, um, first, thing, first things first, is I'm going to, uh, because I'm not going to bore you with the whole setup of this, and let me tell you, it's going to take me a while just to get the freaking die core off the roof. Um, I mean, just to remove this is gonna be a pain. But what I'm gonna do first is I wanna test the system. So I wanna basically get the coaxial cable off of this, which I brought a couple tools to do that with, and then go downstairs, install the controller, and fire this thing up and see how it does right out of the box without installing it first, because I wanna make sure it works, obviously. So bear with me as I remove some parts, and then uh, we'll hook it up to this, go downstairs, and do the uh, controller install. So here I go. There's also a power cable running up here, um, which won't be needed, obviously. But hey, if that's 12 volts, at least you got another cable coming up here that provides 12 volts that you might be able to use for something else, like a razor, excuse me, a wine guard V2 Connect. If that's 12 volts running up here, now you got power for the V2 Connect right up here. If you have a tip and coach, that is. Okay, so I got the coaxial cable. <sighs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is quickly just take this and I'm gonna hook it up to the coaxial cable. I'll just put this here for now. I'm gonna plug it into the coax. Now this is the coax cable that runs downstairs to the, uh, your current switch box for cable TV and over-the-air antenna. So this is the coax that is your over-the-air antenna coax that's running, running somewhere into your motor coach that has a plate on it. You know what I'm talking about, I hope. And that's how we're gonna replace, and it's not very hard to replace that at all. It's uh, three coaxial cables and power. And the power are just pull-off power connectors. Um, you don't have to solder or do anything like that. So, at least I hope not. So there we go, I just did this, okay? So I know this is higher up than it needs to be, but I'm just gonna run a quick test because I wanna make sure it works before I go through the install of all this and everything. And I don't have enough cable unless I extended that to bring it and put it on top of this. So once I figure out if this actually works just like I'd like it to, then I'll go about taking off the feet, putting this on, uh, putting this on here and then removing this and mounting this in its place. And then of course you have to have die core to seal the, to seal the top and everything. So we're about to go downstairs. Um, let's do that. Let's go. Okay, so here we are inside the motor coach. Magically with video vision, we kind of just appeared here. Ooh. Anyways, we're inside the motor coach. Up here, is where my current controller is. Now, you might say, hey, that's not what mine looks like. That's because that is actually a WineGuard Sensor Pro. That's what I use to try to tune the other channel, uh, the other antenna, excuse me. I use that to get my best reception because using that would tell me um, how good the signal is without having to use the television to do so. But we're gonna be replacing it with this, which kind of looks similar, but different. Um, yours looks like this, more than likely which is a normal, hey, funny enough, it's made by WineGuard also. Um, so th this is probably what yours looks like. And we're gonna be taking off the three antennas, the three coaxial cables that are connected to this. And there's two power leads that we're gonna be disconnecting uh, off of this. And it's all gonna be going onto this. However, this is what, so this is what you would be using normally. I've already replaced it, as you can see. So, um, Here's the current controller for the HD television antenna up on the roof that is reading error right now because the cable's disconnected. This is the 12 volt power supply for that. So I'm just gonna remove that altogether to kill that off. And we're gonna need to get the antenna cable off of the back of that. Once again, if you don't have a Tiffin, you don't have this, or if you do have a Tiffin and you just have this, uh, then the cables are already right here and you don't have to worry about getting anything off of that, just to make you aware. So. First things first is, well, first things first is rip this out. And this is the cable that's running up to the roof. So I'm gonna want that cable. 
and you can see this is the control cable running up to the to the to the unit those those cables are running up to the roof uh if you have one of these and those cables are usable um to run 12 volts through for something else if you wanted to okay so i'm just gonna take this right now and leave it there so i can find it just kind of put this aside don't worry about the mess in here it all gets put back together and we're going to remove this if i go the right direction with the gun that is okay okay so you can see back here it looks like the other one now yours would look you know like the one i showed you in a, a second ago but here it is and basically it's it's uh, three wires. This one gives you an extra television out. Don't worry about that. No, again, yours is different. So basically, uh, this is the says over the air antenna. This is the probably the one that's running up here, which it is. So I know that's going to be the antenna cable for me. These are all marked. Just so you know, they're all marked um, on the back of these. They're 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 individually marked antenna in, cable TV, and then TV out. So they're marked. It's really easy to understand. It's very simplistic anybody can do this so um this is first and foremost this is the antenna one that i'm dealing with and you can see that's the one that's connected to that so i now i know i need this antenna cable so now i gotta find it of course and of course i lost it <laughs> Oh, there it is. Okay, so now I gotta get that antenna cable. Come here, come here. Okay, there it is. That's the one I need. And I'm doing these one at a time just so I don't mess up what's going where. And so I know that's the antenna. So this is the antenna in right here. So it doesn't matter if I'm doing this one at a time. There's no power to it or anything right now to hurt anything. So I'm just gonna put this on. me okay now i'm going to look for the cable tv input and i already know that these are marked i have it so that's cable and then this is going to be coach okay so this is cable tv coming in here so i'm going to take that off of there and i'm going to use the cable tv input of the new razor controller and put that on there like that and then I'm going to grab the, the TV out, which is going to my splitters and everything that run to each of the television inputs. And I'm going to put that on the TV output of the Razer controller. So, as you can see, this is really simplistic. Do, 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 okay. Now, we need 12 volts. So this is power and this is ground. So take my ground off of there, just pull it off, pop it on there. Take my power, pop it off there, and pop it on here. Okay, there, we're hooked up. Now it looks like it's powered off right now, which means it's not gonna do anything. Now, just so you're aware, what happens the, per the manual, what it says is when I turn this on, it takes about two minutes. It runs a full search in 360 degree. It moves the antenna around and it takes readings at each location, um, trying to find the, the, I'm gonna go ahead and start that. Um, as you can see, it's running a, it's gonna run a search right now. Let me turn that light down a little bit so you might be able to see it. And it's gonna, it's gonna see how many stations it can find at each separate location, like I was saying. And when it does, it's gonna move on. It's gonna take about two minutes and then it's gonna point the antenna toward the direction of the most television channels it can receive. So the, the, the direction has the most receivable antenna, uh, television channels, it's gonna go to there first. And then it's gonna be able to show you on here the other ones um, you can move it around forward or backwards here and see it, it'll, when it's done, it'll light up which one, which directions, this is the directions and which direction has and tell you how many channels it has and what have you. So this is working. So that's kind of cool. 
So we got power, it's talking to the Razor antenna, it's scanning for channels right now, and then, and then when it's done, I'll be able to see how well it did and see how many channels it'll bring in on our television compared to the old antenna. So there it is. That's really all there is to it, except for mounting it to the roof, which is gonna be a real, well, not fun for me. Dicor is really hard to get off the roof. Okay, so now let's check the television when this is done. I'll come back and we'll see where we are. Okay, so I got everything installed and ready to go. And as you can see, I'm all nicely fully mounted here. I just put that back up there because, well, there's a hole there, so might as well keep that controller there. Um, and you can see now when I turned it on and, and I told it to scan, it says right here, it says these are the three different pointing locations of the antenna that find the most number of, I said channels earlier. I don't mean channels frequencies the most number of frequencies because the frequencies themselves can carry three to four times the number of channels uh, on each frequency and it's telling me right now that the direction that it's getting the most is right there now when i when i read my checks my my written my my scan with the other antenna i only found 34 channels and now when I run a scan, I find 41 channels. So I am getting better reception out of the razor, which is great. That's exactly what you want to do. Now, if I want to point it right now, I know I'm getting Rochester, New York, and that's that way, which doesn't mean anything to you. <laughs> Buffalo's that way. So basically, if I wanted to try to see what are on these different channels, these are this is where it found the next two sets of the most number of frequencies. All I would do is I would hit search and it would move the antenna to the next most powerful frequency wise or most most number of frequencies um, it has. So you can see it moved over to here, which is now down to eight, as you can see. And if I hit it again, it'll move to the next one and so on. And you can scan if you want to see if you get more channels at that point, but it already told you, hey, this direction, I found the most number of frequencies, thus it should be the most number of channels. Well, I hope this makes sense. Um, now that I know everything is working properly, I can install this up on the roof and get rid of the other one. So that should be fun. If you guys want to see that, please feel free to stick around and uh, I'll probably time lapse it right after I say goodbye. But if you don't want to watch that, then you can stop the video right here. Okay, so any case, if you're stopping the video now, thanks for watching. Please click subscribe if you're not a subscriber and we appreciate you. If you want to continue on, then here we go as I install it up on the roof. This should be fun. Okay, so we're up on the roof now. Ugh. And I should have everything I need to get this job done um, up here. And uh, I got my die core and all my little things and everything. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, of course, disconnect the cable from the razor because I'm going to have to be working with that. So I'll just go ahead and disconnect that coax. This is the coax that's running down to the controller. And of course, I know I'm going to need to put this on this plate. So um, go ahead and take this 11 millimeter socket. That's what the nuts are here. And we'll just take these off. You're going to need the, you're going to need the nuts to go onto that. Just so you know. So got that. Now we're going to take this. There doesn't seem to be a front or a back to this thing. So uh, it looks like we just dro drop that right on there. And then we're going to put the screws back onto that. Or the nuts, I should say. Early on, Tiffin was doing the same thing. These things, these things were too low to the roof, and I told Tiffin about it too. So they ended up raising theirs up. And then when I got my first razor, gosh, quite some time ago, got to be almost a couple years old now are these things. But I got them when they originally came out, and I mentioned it to Weingard. And I'm glad they finally got these because now I can put it up on the, uh, now I can put it up here and use it when I wouldn't use it before because I couldn't because I wouldn't get a good signal. So, any case, there that is. And then that's how that's going to mount. So now I got to work on getting this off the roof, which is not something, uh, which is not something that <laughs> it's going to be easy to do. So some essential tools for that is you want some really good uh, putty knives or knives to cutter cutter knives to get 
this die core off the roof because this stuff is really, really hard. And that's probably what I'm going to fast forward through mostly. So when you're working on the roof, of course, A, be careful, but B, you need some really good knives to get the die core off because it really sticks. Make matters worse, I don't know what they have underneath this to hold these brackets on. So I'm going to have to start taking this apart. So I might as well do that. Ta -da. And there's the control wire that's on the bottom of this thing. There's three wires coming through it, um, a ground and whatever. So I got to get that apart now. Uh, did I bring up a, yeah, I got one for that. Now, remember, we just connected the power from this, so I'm not worried about this at all right now. And what I also brought up on the roof with me is um, some, some connectors so I can... In case I ever want to use this wire, I want to protect it, and I also don't want anything to happen to it up on the roof. So, um, what I did is I brought up with me my wire cutters, first of all, and I'm just going to cut this thing back down, just so the ends don't have anything that will touch. And what I'll do is I'll seal this cord up here too, so I'll have it. Um, but what I'm going to do to protect that even further is I'm going to take a butt connector, and I'm going to just pinch these wires off inside of a butt connector just to protect them and then I'm gonna I'll pretty I'll leave the wire exposed so I know where the wire is but then I'll die core over it. Does that make sense? Hope so. So now I know those are safe. I don't have to worry about that. Now when I'm cutting when I'm getting these off Actually, I could probably, let's see if this will go over this. Oh, actually it might. Yes. Oh, good. What I'm gonna do is I'm not, <laughs> yay. We're gonna save a lot of time here. I'm not gonna worry about removing these brackets. I know they're properly sealed and everything. So I don't have to worry about that. I know the wires are, everything's done. If I was taking this off though, I would use these and start scraping, you know, popping all this die core off, finding where they're, where they're screwed down, unscrewing them, and then putting, putting this in its place, putting screws in and, and whatever. But the good news is, yay, uh, this is actually lower than this by just a touch. It just touches the bottom of that, which allows me to not have to worry about removing all that freaking die core. Yes. So I'm going to put the control wire back on or the actual, not the control, the coaxial. I kind of like the fact that they do everything over one cable, power and everything over the coaxial. So that's kind of nice. So then you only have to worry about one thing. And I'm just going to slung that cable up just a little bit, not over tighten it, don't ever over torque the cable. Now I'm going to look to see what I can do here. Where's that? Okay, so there's the mount. So if I back this up like that, I can get away from any issue of possibly hitting um, hitting a wire. So what I'm going to do is I see where I need to go now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the die core. I'm actually going to cu cut the die core back here so I can put the foot flush on on the roof. Um, I see where it needs to go. So once again, using a really good uh, putty knife, you know. I can cut through the die core pretty quickly on at least making a cut. Getting it off the roof comes sometimes can be a real pain. And I'm only doing this so I don't get to the wires and I also have that foot on the ground. Okay, let's see what that looks like now. Much better. Much better. And I don't care about this. This doesn't bother me one bit. It's just more support because this is still going to go right to the roof with no issue whatsoever. And this goes right. See, now I can get that down under the roof back here. Cool. I'll go with that. I'm happy with that. I'll do that. Cool.
bonus that it fits over the top of this. Yay, wine guard who probably didn't even know they were doing that. <laughs> or if they did, cool. Okay, so I'm just getting stuff out of the way here. Make sure I don't get anything where it doesn't need to be. Once again, I just cut that die core back and I'm gonna die core all around this when I get done. So all of this will be sealed and I'm not gonna have to worry about it after that. So, I find out. Three, six, nine. Uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, comes with the screws. Yeah. Let's see what size these are, see if I got the right. Yay, nine sixteenths, which will allow me to zip this in real quick. Get my ratchet gun. And now what I can do to make sure I don't have any issues, I'm gonna put die core on the top of this before I put the screws down. So it will actually go down through the hole to seal the hole as it goes down. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some die core over each one of these holes so that when I screw this down, it, the die core will go onto the screw into the fiberglass. I'm also going to hope, because you're never 100% sure how they wired things, I'm going to assume I'm not going to hit anything. <laughs> I know, that sounds bad. I know. It sounds really bad, actually. But it's true. I don't have a clue. And so I don't get die cord over there. I'm going to put it over the top of this. So if it drips, it's just going to drip on something that's already die cord. So here we go. Into the roof we go. See what happened with the die cord? Sucked it right down. I'm going to get it. And I didn't bring anything up for this. It figures. Now I'm going to get this all over my freaking tool. Ugh, I didn't bring any stuff up to clean my hands. Oh, no. Ugh, and let me tell you, die core is not fun to play with. Oh, no. Okay. Eh. That sucked. Okay, but it's there. It's not going to go anywhere. So now. <laughs> uh, I suck. I really suck. I don't believe I didn't bring anything up with me. And Brenda's walking, so I can't ask her to toss me anything up. So, since I'm already a mess, let's just go ahead and finish this. Stuff gets over everything, let me tell you. Make sure you have <laughs> make sure you have something to clean up with. <laughs> See, this die core is self-leveling, so it'll look really nice when it's done. Everything will be nice and clean and good. Now, since I have all this die core left, I'm going to go around and, and look at the rest of the roof and see if I see anything that I can use some die core on. But for all intents and purposes, this is done. My new WineGuard Razor High Definition Antenna is in place. I didn't even have to remove the old brackets, which is good because the least work you have to do on the roof, the better you are. I don't want to disturb this if I don't have to. Um, and I'm glad I didn't, so that's good. And the die core is laying down really nicely in here. And now I'll just take this cable in case I ever need 12 volts. I have it right here. And um, I'll just tuck this somewhere so I have it. And... Uh, if I ever need it, I got it. So what I'm going to do is just lay the cable down right here and I'm just going to put some die core over it 
just to keep it in place. And then if I ever need it, I have it. Whenever you have a cable run up on the roof that you can possibly use, it's a good thing. So, there it is. The wine guide razor installed, complete with goop on hands. So, I need to now get all this stuff off the roof and clean up. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, thank you to WineGuard for now I have a WineGuard roof. From my sat dome, to my high definition antenna, to my, my dish network traveler, to the uh, WineGuard Connect V2. <laughs> roof by WineGuard. I just made that up by the way. Uh, trademark. Ah. Okay. Anyways, I'm Dave Fott from Outside Our Bubble, and if you like what we do, please click subscribe. If you don't, don't click subscribe. And if you really like what we do and you're already subscribed, please click thumbs up. It helps us in the ratings. We appreciate each and every one of you, and uh, we hope to see you on the road. Take care. Keep safe. Bye. Got to get the stuff off my hands. Ugh. Hey, paint thinner works great to get Dicor off, by the way. See ya.